Hello everyone, this is a Ron Talk and in this video I wanted to discuss uh, something very important and that's uh, the Arab uh, cultural domination of Iran. Now again this was a cultural domination and it was not, it was not at all a genetic domination. You know many individuals say that Iran was could genetically dominated by the Arabs and Iranian genetics were replaced by Arab genetics but this is not true as all genetic evidence has proven there to be and this is definitive this is definitive evidence all genetic evidence has proven there to be 90 to 95 percent genetic continuity in Iran since the Iron Age in fact my recent calculations showed even greater uh, g genetic uh, continuity than this greater than 95 percent and this is remarkable but it does make sense in a historical and cultural sense as many Arabs did not settle in the Iranian plateau as I will get into that later in this video but before I get into that I would just like to begin by saying that Iran was only culturally dominated by the Arabs for 170 years and for the first 99 years it was really cultural domination the next uh, Year, 71 years that happened was not cultural domination. This was the period of the Abbasids and the Abbasids did allow Iranians a great deal of freedom to speak their own language and to do a lot of other things that the Umayyads did not allow them to do so uh, express their culture and actually the Abbasids even incorporated Persian elements into their courtly life. This is another fact that most Iranians don't know about. Most individuals do not know about it. But the first part of this video will specifically focus on the Umayyads and the worst 99 years of Arab occupation. Now not all of this was by the Umayyads. The early were the Rashidun but the Rashidun rail ended, reign rather ended in 661 and it was followed by harsh Arab rule under the Umayyads and this was the worst part in Iranian history and the worst part of Arab occupation of Iran. Now uh, early Arab rule began after 651 when the armies of the Caliph Uthman f completed their conquest of Iran which was begun under the Caliph Omar and this conquest was completed largely by 651 and it was during this period that Iran fell under the rule of the uh, uh, Rashidun caliphs. Now th these caliphs were just consolidating their rule over Iran but this rule would not last long as in 661 the Umayyads uh, overthrew the uh, Rashidun caliphate and usurped uh, the caliphate and the Umayyads were very harsh on the native Iranians. They were very strict practitioners of Islam and they attempted to strictly enforce the Arabic language and dominate uh, Iran culturally and linguistically and initially this was not the case the Arabs they did not want to initially force Iran to start speaking Arabic but it was until not until the reign of Abdul Malik Abdul Mal sorry about that Abdul Malik Ibn Marwan that the Arabs began to forcefully uh, enforce the Persian the rather the Arabic language in their territories and they began to suppress Persian and this was a very dark time for, for Iranians and under Al Hajjaj ibn Yusuf who was a major Umayyad vizier and governor he forcibly began to eradicate remnants of Persian culture and Persian linguistics in Iran and he began this process through a series of harsh punishments for anyone who spoke the Iranian language now before I move forward all I wanted to say is that uh, the uh, Arab occupation of Iran early on did not result in a great deal of massacres of the native Iranian populations. This is not true as the only major Arab massacre in Iran was at uh, the city of Astakra which rebelled against Arab rule. The Arabs generally did not massacre the Iranians but they did rule with a great deal of harsh towards the Iranian population and they oppressed the Iranian populations greatly and they could have exterminated all of the Iranian population but they chose to they chose not to do so rather anyways getting back to the topic at hand Hajjaj ibn Yusuf wanted to eradicate the Persian language and replace it with Arabic and he began this through strict enforcement of Arabic language in schools and he even wanted to have migrants uh, Arab migrants to the Iranian heartland with Iranian families and forced them to become Muslims and Arabs but this did not really completely uh, entirely go through as this only happened in Iranian Khorasan the major
majority of the Iranian heartland was spared. The Arabs hated the Iranians during this period. They did not at all admix with the Iranians. Arab settlement in Iran was limited to around 40,000 to 50,000 people during this time and this was at the, its height. You know, The total population of the Iranian plateau at this time was between 5 and 8 million and the total population of greater Iran was between 10 and 13 million and there was no way 50,000 Arabs could replace this population. There's no way and the Arab uh, presence in Iran was only very limited but their cultural dominance was strong and for the first uh, few hundred years of the Arab occupation so I would say around 120 years because the early Abbasids were also very strict about this but anyways for the first uh, say 99 years under the Umayyads 89 of these were obviously under the Umayyads 10 under the Rashidun there was an attempt to Arabize the Iranian population this did not happen but there were great consequences on the Iranian population because of this attempt and they were more, mostly cultural as the Arab became the language of sciences and this is very unfortunate and later on Arab also became a major language of uh, literature as well in Iran and also science too. Now this is very unfortunate because the Persian language was dominant and dominant rather and it was not until the Buyids and the Samanids that Persian would re-emerge but nonetheless the Arab domination of Iran was mostly cultural and linguistic. It was not uh, at all, uh, you know, it was not at all uh, genetic and this domination did not even last long. It did not last more than a mere 99 years, this early domination. Now I will get into the Abbasids and discuss how they ruled Iran and their consequences for the Iranian population and the Iranian heartland and I will get into the origins of the Abbasids in Iran. Now prior to the rise of the Abbasids, they were already well settled in Iran. They were settled in Khorasan and they had likely heavily admixed with the native Persians in Khorasan prior to uh, rising to power. They were helped by the Persians of the Shubuya movement into power and the Shubuya movement was the nativist Iranian movement which wanted to get greater rights for Iranians. This uprising happened in Khorasan led by Abu Muslim Khorasani. He managed to defeat the Umayyads at the Battle of the Zab. This was a major revolution and Persian armies from a great deal of Persian served in Abu Muslim's army. They were majority Persian and this was a decisive victory for Abu Muslim Khorasani and it led to the disintegration of the Umayyad Caliphate, its replacement with the Abbasid Caliphate and the Abbasids were very lenient towards the Persians. Early on they weren't that lenient and they did rip, rip, they did uh, suppress many Zoroastrian up, uh, uprisings but nonetheless by the reign of Harun al-Rashid they came to tolerate the Persians. They promoted Persian culture in their courtly life and they also tolerated the Persian language in Iran while the Arabic still remained the language of science and culture. Nonetheless under the Abbasids the Persians were again allowed to speak their language and were not oppressed as, as they had been during the reign of Al-Hajjaj ibn Yusuf and this is a major thing to note here for if it was not for the Iranian uprising under Abu Muslim Khorasani which was a nativist Iranian uprising you know the majority of his army was Iranian and this overthrow of the Umayyads changed history and the course of Iranian history for the better as because of this uh, uprising the Abbasid Caliphate emerged and because of the weakness of the Abbasid Caliphate to centralize control like the Umayyads had many native Iranian dynasties arose during the Iranian intermezzo period and these nativist dynasties restored the Persian language as a language of culture and science as well as literature in the Iranian heartland though nonetheless they did incorporate many aspects of Arabic into the Persian language and most of the Arabization of the Persian language occurred during this period and not before. This was the period where there was a great deal of intermingling between Arabic and Persian in Iran and that's why today Farsi is heavily influenced by Arabic but nonetheless it does not mean that the Farsi language today is an Arabic language or a Semitic language or an Arab derived language and it has nothing to do with genetics as all genetic evidence in Iran has proven there to be 90 to 95 percent genetic continuity but anyway that's essentially it for this video this video was a short look at the Arab uh, cultural dominance in Iran which had nothing to do with genetics which had nothing to do with the replacement of the Iranian people uh, genetically with the with an Arabian people or with an Arabian component there's no genetic evidence for this Iranians today cluster all together and all of them cluster with the Iron Age Iranian proving that there is indeed 90 to 95 percent genetic continuity in Iran but yeah thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you again and take care